All right, today we're going to talk about periodic trends. Up to this point, we've already talked about the periodic table and how powerful it is as a tool to get just overt information. But we can also use this periodic table to predict properties of elements, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're predicting these properties just based on where that element happens to live on the periodic table in relation specifically sometimes to its neighbors. Um, these trends, though, it's important to know that these are often the case. These are often predictors of the properties, but we can't know for sure. So the predicted property is often true, but not always true. The only way to truly know the actual properties that we're discussing is to do a lab experiment to actually determine those properties. So activity is the first one we're going to use, also known as reactivity, and that's a description of how good an atom is at reacting. Now, for activity or reactivity, we look at two different locations on the periodic table. We have a trend kind of for the metals and we have a trend kind of for the nonmetals. So for the metals, we get more active towards the bottom left, close to francium. And then for nonmetals, we get more active towards the top right, close to fluorine. So if you're nonmetal, closer to fluorine, either to the right or farther up, you're going to be more reactive. If you're a metal closer to francium, either down or further left, you're going to be more reactive. But then the noble gases over here, these are unreactive. These are unreactive. Out of all the atoms on the periodic table, fluorine is the most reactive, but for the metals, the most reactive metal would be francium. So that's activity. Now activity is slightly based on radius. So the bigger the atom, so if you're metal, if you're really big, you don't hold on to your electrons very tightly, and that means that you can give them away easily, and if you can give your electrons away easily, you can react easily. On the other hand, if you're really small, you can um, pull in other atoms' electrons, which means that you react more often. So that reactivity trend is partially based off of radius. Now, radius is based on two characteristics, the number of energy levels. So as we go down the periodic table, the number of energy levels increases. I like to think of it as layers of clothes. So if you're in energy level one, like hydrogen helium, you only have one layer of clothing on. If you are in energy level two, such as lithium all the way through neon, you're going to have two levels and so on and so forth. The more layers of clothes, of course, the bigger you get. So that explains why we go down the periodic table, why the atoms get bigger. What we need to also talk about is why atoms get smaller as you go from the left side to the right side. Now the reason that that happens is because the number of protons in the nucleus is going to increase going from left to right. So for a given energy level, choose for example energy level 3 which includes atoms sodium through argon, the uh, atom sodium happens to have 11 protons. Now it's going to have the same number of layers, three layers all the way across even though as we get over to argon where we have 18 protons. So the number of protons increases, but the distance away from the nucleus, the energy level, decreases or stays the same. The energy level stays the same. Because of that, the power, the positive power of the nucleus, the pull of the nucleus increases as you go from left to right, therefore pulling those negative charges in more tightly. I like to think of it as a vacuum where the number of protons behave as a vacuum cleaner power and they pull those, those electrons, those negatively charged electrons in towards the nucleus. The last uh, periodic trend that we're going to look at as far as our, our class goes is electronegativity. And what electronegativity looks at is bonded atoms, atoms that are inside of a bond. We can look at how well those two atoms share electrons with each other. Um, if you are an atom that shares perfectly evenly with your neighbor, your electronegativity uh, is going to match your neighbor. On the other hand, if you really like electrons, you um, are going to have a high electronegativity value. If you really don't like electrons that much, you're going to have a low value. So if you like electrons, your EN value, your electronegativity value is going to be high. Now, atoms that like electrons are going to be nonmetals. That's why they receive electrons when we do ionic bonding. So fluorine is going to have a high electronegativity. This is the highest electronegativity. It's fluorine. The lowest electronegativities are going to be down by francium. They really don't like electrons. And this partially explains why we, we saw the reactivity trend. And also, this is partially explained by size. If you're small, you can pull electrons in. If you're big, you just let your electrons flop out in the breeze, and it's really easy to, to take them away and to give them to someone else. So um, we see this because, again, the uh, layers of electrons 
layers of energy levels gets greater as you go down. And then um, over here, there's not a lot of positive pull. So they don't like their electrons that much. They're very happy giving them away. On the other hand, these atoms really like their electrons. They have a powerful nucleus to pull them in. And they don't have very many energy levels. So that nucleus, that positive charge, is very close to those electrons. On the right-hand side here, again, the noble gases do not have affinity for electrons. So we're not going to really see them with uh, electronegativity. As far as it goes for using these trends on the periodic table, if you have a multiple choice question or a just pick one of two question, you're going to find both atoms and you're going to compare them in relation to each other. For example, if I wanted to know which has a higher electronegativity, sodium or potassium, I'm going to find sodium, which is right around in here, potassium, which is over here. So going down would have a lower electronegativity, which means that the higher value would be for sodium, it's higher up. If I wanted to compare, let's say, nitrogen and oxygen, here's nitrogen around, uh, right around in here. Here's oxygen. Oxygen is closer to fluorine, so it's going to have a higher electronegativity value. Hope that helps. What you should have learned is three basic periodic trends and how you might use them and then why those trends work the way they do.